Good morning YouTube or afternoon, evening, depending when you're watching this. Morning for me, it's nine o'clock and it's Wednesday, Wednesday the 26th of July. And I'm about to have my last caffeine of the day, which is going to be the White Monster. So I've been told off in my check-in yesterday that I need to, because I'm logging my caffeine intake on my sheets and it's a little bit excessive at the moment. Like I've been very, very tired recently and then just like you know relying on caffeine and so the other day I think it was like three coffees a monster and a pre-workout and that was that is exceeding any kind of recommended daily intake of caffeine so piss take really so I've had a coffee already and this is going to be my second and final caffeine of the day um so I have driving at half 10 so I've kind of boxed off a few check-ins this morning I'm going to box off a few more now and then got my driving lesson and then um yeah obviously just get on with my rest of my day um with any other work that i need to do and also yeah like go and train in my lower half which is going to be fantastic because i've got quite a bit of dons but yeah the goal is to not rely on a pre-workout before that and just kind of go and get my session done yeah so i just today i'm going to do basically like a full day of eating now my calories are quite high on a training day they're like about 3100 it's a lot of food it's a lot more than a like ever been able to eat before and you know it's like I, I got to like 3,000 at an absolute push in my last off season and that was with bad body composition so I'm going to take you through a full day of eating <clears throat> I'm going to talk about obviously my new coach I said in my last video I would talk about that um so that's what I'm going to do and um yeah I've already had the first part of my first meal so it's quite a hefty um, amount of food so I sort of have the 90 grams of oats and then it's like 36 grams of whey and 15 grams of peanut butter and then like some fruit depending on what I have it needs to be like 10 10 grams no it's 15 grams worth of fruit 15 grams worth of carbs from fruit sorry so yeah the whole macro approach is different which I will I will go into as well and I'll explain how I'm tracking my macros like why is it 36 grams away specifically that kind of thing so yeah that's been had I'm gonna crack on with some check-ins now the final part of meal one will just literally be um, a banana and some chocolate and then I'll, I'll take you on the day not that you particularly need to see this, but this is the second part of meal one. The banana, the chocolate, which is seven grams, because it fits the macros. Right, so before my driving lesson, I, I'm just going to start getting my intra workout ready, even though I'm literally not going to probably train until about 2pm. But it's cool. I've got a moment now, I've just eaten in the kitchen anyway, so I am going to, um, I'm going to, what shall I go for? I've got a choice between an overfarm or a uh, ghost, which is shite to be fair, wouldn't wouldn't recommend this one. The panel's nowhere near as good as this and it doesn't taste that good, even though it's blue raspberry it's meant to taste good. But I had to be an overfarm yesterday, so in line with a variety is a spice of life, I'm going to have the ghost today. Um, so just weighing it out, a scoop's about 10 grams, so I'll keep to that. Yes, and then we add creatine, which I wasn't having with my previous coach, it wasn't on the plan, so I just didn't have it. Now it's back on, so I'm having 5 grams, having it in my intra, just for ease, like, you know, creatine tastes like shit, let's be honest. So if we can mix it in with intra, then it makes sense, doesn't it? So that's that, five grams daily, as per standard recommendations. And then we put two grinds, oh not two grinds, two grams of pink salt in with that. So yeah, it's really helpful if you get one of the uh, really accurate to the to the 0.1 um, scales so that you can actually measure out your salt. Um, otherwise you're just gonna be, you'd have no idea really what you're actually taking in. I found it really hard when I used to have scales that just kind of measured per gram. So that's intro, gonna, um, yeah put the water in there now, up to the top, put it in the fridge, and then it's got a few hours to just chill down. Cold intra. It's a vibe, especially on a hot day like today. Okay, so I'm getting another meal in now. Like, depending what time I train, I'll have, like, my meal too um, will be, like, my post-workout meal. But if I train later in the day, I'll just get my other meals in kind of beforehand. So this is, like, just, like, slower acting carbs. I've got 270 grams of potatoes, which I made yesterday. So I'm always just kind of making an extra portion when I, when I cook them off, just so it's like, when I know I'm going to be busy, which is basically every single day, I don't have to keep prepping every single time. So 270 potatoes with some veggies as well from like frozen veg. And yes, 
Then I've, I'm going to have, I think it's 87 grams of chicken that works out with 25 grams of lean protein, which is what I need for this meal. So I'm going to have this. I'll just add like some salad items to it as well, just to bulk the meal out a little bit. But yeah, that's pretty much um, another one of my meals. Nothing exciting. Right, guys, I am going to keep on top of this full day of eating. So I've just got a bowl of fruit going in now. It's summer fruits that's frozen and frozen pineapple as well. I need 15 grams um, from fruit for carbs as like my around my workout. I'm also going to get in a peanut butter bagel right now. These are all just kind of around my workout window now. Obviously, quite a few carbs going in. Right, OK, finally, I can head out to the gym. It's like quarter past two. So meals and stuff wise today, it's not like an accurate representation of how the meals should be in order but I'm just getting in the meals as and when I can or the food as and when I can. Goal is to like go into the session not hungry ideally. So just had a fruit, just had the bagel, I'm feeling good. I'm gonna get to the gym. I always take a square bar with me so that as soon as I've finished training pretty much at the moment, I'm absolutely ravenous. Like I started to get quite hungry towards the end of the session. So I've got something to eat before because it's, it's the fact that I've got to have like a half an hour walk home from the gym as well. So I don't wanna be walking home feeling absolutely trashed. Um, yeah, so I'd, I'd rather have something on my walk home as well. So I'll have this at the gym after my session. And that's it. I'm going to head to the gym now. It's lower two, which is actually like, yeah, about four or five leg movements. And then it's um, it's into like shoulders, which is exciting. I love shoulders. So, yeah, I'm going to show you the session. So see you in the gym. Right, lads, I've made it to the gym. One thing I love about this gym is it's kind of like a one man in, one man out. God knows what all that water is in the wall. It's like a one man in, one man out changing room. So it's kind of like you come in here on your own and you can just kind of like calibrate before your session. So I'm going to leave that here because I've had my pre-workout. And then yeah, it just gives me a chance to calibrate and get my shit together, leave anything I need to leave. And then at the end of the session, it's when I'll come back here and have my squares bar. But yeah, I've got everything I need gonna go and get stuck in it's abductor first so let's get some glute gains i think my head's just about in the shot as i lean down i'm just using the tripod gym the gym tripod but yeah exercise number one is the abductor so just a couple of feeder sets going into this and then i believe it's three working sets as per most of my movements in this session so let me get my sheets up which is how I love all of my sessions of season 2023. So we have lower two. Abductor is three sets of 10 to 15, so just do a few feeder sets first and then we'll get into it really. Okay, you can possibly hear me now. I'm not doing much talking in this session because the music's actually loud in here and I don't have like a mic or anything. Um, 
yes, after my super sets of leg extension and walking lunges and now um, split squats and now after split squats is the last leg movement of the day, the last lower movement which is uh, a machine hip thrust. So. So gone slightly heavier than last week, but an extra five aside. So instead of doing weight aside, I'm doing a plate and a five. I don't like to treat glute, glute drive as like a sort of main compound in a sense, like super heavy. I like it to be like almost like an accessory. I feel like this whole session is quite an accessory session. So yeah, nice and light, but it's really fucking hard for me because I'm really focusing on engaging my glutes only. And when you do that. Food drive becomes a lot harder. Right, I'm back into the quiet area now, so yeah, just on my lateral raises, so delts are nice and kind of oiled, and it's now on to machine calf raises to finish, and then just some crunches. So yeah, I also just met a professional rugby player who's just joined this gym. Good choice from him, he said he went to Ultraflex uh, in, the, in Pudsey, which as he knows, because anyone can tell when they go there, it's a shit gym, so he didn't like that, unsurprisingly. And then he went to Old Image, he said it was okay, but he's joined here, so... Yeah, he was like, I just need to get like, put on some size, and I'm like, fair enough, you're in the right place. Um, so that was cool. Followed me on Instagram. I love it here because I just think it's, it's a small gym with like a good atmosphere. There's never too many people training, so you end up kind of chatting to people that are here, which is really nice. But anyway, I'm gonna get on with these now and uh, wrap up the session. Right, that's me done after the session. It's now like five o'clock. Can't remember what time I started, but it's been a while. Long session. But yes, got it done. I'm not actually feeling hungry yet. Sort of peckish, but I'm gonna eat anyway because yeah, like I said, I've got a long walk home, at least half an hour. And yeah, I've got a big meal to get in when I get home. So I'll, I'll be going in at about six and then I'll have, that'll be meal three. And then I've got like meal four and five to eat as well. So I need to kind of get home now and finish off my meals. I'll see you there. Also, that was super hard to film that whole session. Like, it's so hard for me. People don't realize how hard it is to like actually film your session. Um, Something like, you know, you just wanna get on with your session. So the fact that I did that, I feel like you guys should drop a like on the video to appreciate the effort I've gone to. The chocolate orange squares hit different. 150 in Asda at the moment. They might not be when you watch this video, but they were when I bought them.
Right fam, back home now and it's currently a race against time to get my meals in. It's quarter to six, I've put my rice on, so I'm going to have that as post-workout. Um, and yes, I've got two flat peaches to get my fruit quota for this meal. So I'm going to snack into these now while I'm waiting for the rice to cook because I'm actually hungry. So each meal is, well there's, there's five meals in the day and each meal is salted with two grams of pink salt. I think it's 12 grams in the day because I think I get, I think it's um, two grams of my April workout as well, which works out at 12 in the day. I might have to check that actually. And then if not, I'll stop having it for my meals if it's meant to be 10, but yeah. Pink salt goes on the meals and I'm just gonna sort of season the rice as well. So I've got pilau rice seasoning, which just makes it taste a lot nicer. I hate it when it gets stuck at the bottom, do you know what I mean? Kind of need to loosen it up a little bit. There we go. And now it should sprinkle nicely. Voila. I mean, there's so much rice that I'm going to have to sort of sprinkle it and then cake the layers. Obviously, I don't have to be as mindful with amounts of seasonings and stuff now that I'm not on prep. And for the chicken, I'm going to season it with chicken seasoning. So there we go. And there we go. That is a lot of rice with 87 grams of chicken. There's 52 grams of avocado there, which makes 10 grams of fat and 25 grams of protein. And then the rice is 60 grams of carbs. Right, I nearly forgot to film then. I, yeah, I'm just in that mode now of like, get the day done. It's quarter past eight. I've got my fourth meal, which is gonna be 270 potatoes. And then I've got four turkey rashes. So there's no fats going in with this meal. It's just, I've, I've had them earlier. I shouldn't have really had them post-workout. That's the main meal of, of that training day where they're not meant to be. But yeah, this has not been the most kind of like accurate full day of eating in terms of like how my food's meant to be split throughout the day. Um, but I've still got all my uh, food in. That's the main thing. And yeah, it's about 3,100 calories. I'll give you the um, full macro breakdown of how it's kind of landed at the end of the day later on. But I think it's like just over 400 grams of carbs, for example. Um, and I'll let you know that properly. But yeah, just got four turkey rashes here that I'm just cutting up and um, the, the, the convection cooker is going mental because it doesn't like things like this the, it's beeping because it doesn't like things on it when it's not cooking but hey ho turkey rashes and then the potatoes and then I meant to have like you know two or three handfuls of like veg and stuff with with it so I've just kind of got that going on and I'm gonna put my two grams of salt as well onto the meal and uh, gonna eat this let it digest for a bit and then I've got like 68 grams of oats. They're going to be chocolatey, I think. No, I might have a, I might actually have the uh, the CMP. It's the glazed donut, which is really nice, but I'll still have it with like chocolate. Okie dokie, it's Saturday now, the 29th. So a few days later and yeah, obviously that full day of eating was very higgledy piggledy. It was a classic example of a busy day of an online coach where you're just trying to cram your meals in and yeah, it, I'm getting used to the macro split but I'm still getting in all the macros, just not exactly in the order it's meant to be. I know I didn't fully kind of explain what like that whole macro approach was um, and in, the, in terms of like my new coach, for those of you who maybe don't know yet, I have gone with Christian Chapman. So yeah, pretty much I was just following Christian for quite a long time and the reason I chose Christian was really just a lot to do with like his overall approach with coaching like I've always kind of craved that approach of like a lot more kind of thorough detail like for example like the daily tracking which I really like like tracking my caffeine intake and therefore I've been asked to you know reduce it and things like that yeah just like everything's very much more like meticulous and thorough um you know with the training as well I'm really enjoying the training it's very specified to me and you know there's like volume escalations and things that are going to happen which I've, I've always craved having a coach who would like look after my training for me and like you know escalate volume so I don't have to and things like that Um, I've never had it like I've always kind of just done my own thing it's nice to give their reins to someone else I think just coming into off season now like I just wanted to be kind of like looked after a little bit like in the sense of um obviously you know my prep was amazing Tom did the job perfectly but like, it's just a case of like, what type of coach do you want to work with? So coming into off season, I just, I wanted like a, a lot more um, in terms of the, like the detail of every, every part of my day. 
um, the training side of things and also just the, the most important thing and the reason I picked Christian was the personality like I I want like a relationship with my coach in the sense of like I want like a rapport where I can say like I've had a shit week um, and the, I, I've just noticed that Christian's like very empathetic I kind of just need that like I kind of want that approach you know um, like to just be able to say like felt shit this week lol and then not be told like this is bodybuilding. I want to be kind of like looked after in a sense. Um, and like, yeah, okay, Christian's gonna like not just like bow down and be really sympathetic, but he's gonna like, yeah, he's gonna like address it, approach it. Like, basically, like, check ins so far have been, I've been, I've had three check ins from Christian and they've been like decent length voice notes with a lot of value. If that makes, uh, not, not voice notes, sorry, decent length videos with a lot of value and a lot of kind of like addressing what I've said because you're tracking so meticulously all week um, and giving a lot more detail. It's like there's a lot more to sort of talk about and pick up on. Um, so yeah, it's just a lot more thorough and it's a lot more like personable as well. And that's just what I need right now. And it's what I want. And I think I think sometimes there's that kind of, oh my God, someone's like coach hopped. Like what the hell? Like the other coach must have been terrible. Wow, wow, what happened? Nothing happened. Like Tom was great at what he did. He got me the, you know, the result. He got me through that prep and it was the easiest smoothest prep I've ever done and like I said earlier it just depends on what you're looking for from a coach and um yeah as well like I think people forget that like you know you only get one shot at your bodybuilding journey like we're not all going to be bodybuilding forever there will be a cut-off point and so for me I want to not just kind of have the same approach that I've just literally had for like an off-season and a prep I don't want to repeat that for the next off-season and prep I want something different and yeah, like the, the macro approach with Christian is very different. It's literally like I get trace macros, like as in like, you know, even it'll be, I think it's something as low as like 125 protein. It sounds low for like a rest day, but that's coming, that's coming from like um, net, net protein as in like, you know, so every meal is pretty much like 25 grams of a lean protein. So like I'll pick like chicken or I'll pick like maybe hex sausages or whey, which works out with 36 grams of whey, which is why I've been having that now. Um, so everything is kind of like, it's per meal so it's a little bit more in depth it's not just like here's your macros for the day it's these are the macros i need you to hit per meal like 110 grams of of carbs from you know fast digesting sources post-workout so you, you need to think about you know bagels that kind of thing post-workout um pre-workout will be like 60 grams of carbs from starch that kind of thing so you need to pick a starch source like whether that's rice or whatever to have and a certain amount and it's everything's gonna lean sources so it just encourages you to eat cleaner it encourages you to be accountable for your day in terms of like how you're actually structuring your macros um, and then it allows as well that you don't kind of get protein like you know bagels for example you don't get just like trace protein uh, from bagels like so you end up like you get your net macros for the day but you end up like consuming a lot more food overall because you know you've got all these kind of trace carbs from chocolate or trace car like trace protein from bagels so yeah it makes you pick clean sources because you can't pick something that contains shitloads of another macro for example like you need like a lean protein source you're not picking like a protein yogurt that has like 10 grams of carbs in it for example if you can if you can so help it so it's just making me eat a lot cleaner which is good and it just yeah it makes me more accountable for my food choices throughout the day and how i'm structuring my meals so yeah it's different and that's something that i'm learning already if that makes sense so yeah everything's different the, the, the oh my god my knee looks really weird in the shot there <laughs> yeah the whole approach is different and I, I just think you know as a coach myself I need to be not just kind of having the same approach for my entire bodybuilding journey when I've got a chance to learn um, from a completely different individual who has a completely different approach to coaching overall um, and a very very good approach to business I think most of you will know who the hell Christian Chapman is and you'll know um, how well he's doing business-wise at the moment so it's, it's it's very very motivating for me um, to be working with someone like Christian so yeah that's pretty much it guys that's pretty much I know some of you will have been like oh my god like why have you left Tom well it's, it's not really why have I left Tom it's like why have I joined Christian my main motivation wasn't like Tom's shit I need to leave Tom it was more I really want to work with Christian like for months I'd been thinking oh I'd love to work with that guy like he seems so fucking cool and like oh, I wish I could work with him but I'm with Tom so I can't and it's like no I can I can do what I bloody want actually with my bodybuilding journey and my life my health I can do what I bloody want so actually I was like I fucking want to work with Christian so I'm gonna go and do it and you know I'll just have to let Tom know that that's what I'm gonna be doing and crack on you know um 
yeah, I swear I hear a lot of people that say like, ah, oh, I'd love to work with such and such a coach, but obviously I've already got my coach. It's like, you can move coaches. It's not the end of the world. And Tom's like, you know, smashing what, what whatever he's doing with all his other clients. Like, he's not going to be worrying about me not being coached by him anymore, you know? So yeah, that's what I've done. I've, I've, I've moved on and I'm excited and I'm really enjoying the first few weeks so far. And I'm really happy with my decision. So hopefully that's cleared up anything. I kind of just wanted to wait and talk about it on here rather than kind of like just randomly starting to tag a new coach on Instagram or that kind of thing. I wanted it to like, I wanted it to just be on here and that also just be in my own time as well when I've had a few weeks to kind of adjust and settle with my decision. Um, so that's why I've waited and I hope that's, you know, explained everything. If anyone has any questions, just let me know. Just drop me a line. Um, obviously, I'll keep the YouTubes coming. Plenty of fun to come in the few weeks. Uh, you know, I've got client shows coming up and things like that. So there's lots more content to come. Um, and especially, you know, just kind of vlogging my off season, my post show, etc. Uh, if you guys want to see more of anything, let me know. If you want to see more training sessions, that kind of thing, literally just let me know and I will do it. And more full days of eating and probably a, a, a better structured one next time when I've, when I've settled more into it all. So yeah, thanks as always for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one. Ciao for now.